Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Gartner, a double board certified plastic surgeon. Join me today as we watch this interesting video of a young guy building a surgery robot. Stay tuned and check it out. Da Vinci Surgical System is the most advanced a streamlined surgical experience for minimally invasive surgery available. Sir. So Da Vinci Surgical System is not something I use as a plastic surgeon, but it's uh, been around for like 10 years. And a lot of ob gyn doctors are using it for surgery and especially urologists who do prostatectomies, removing the prostate. Supposedly the advantage is you can see everything uh, magnified on a wide screen. They have the robot in the room and the surgeon kind of is behind the computerized system and he's in the room with the patient itself. I've seen hospitals now make a lot of investments in this and some have like three or four uh, in each hospital. Supposedly it's uh, very successful for urology, ob and it's uh, being further applied to other surgical specialties. In the world today. Grade. I can build that. He can build that. How's everyone's global health crisis going? My house is on full goddamn quarantine and I'll probably be dead in a week anyway. Not from the virus, like, like a electrocution accident or something. It's actually giving me a lot of free time and what better way to spend free time right now than to help the medical industry. Now I can't do any chemistry or biology or like body stuff, yuck, but I can do robotics. And let me tell you, those Da Vinci surgery robotics rat bastards are ripping hospitals off. Look at this, $2 million for one shitty robot. They can spend that on a couple hundred bandages or like one ambulance ride in the US. We can build a better surgery robot for a lot less come on the biggest that I gotta see he can build a better surgery robot so this will be interesting the flaw in da Vinci's design is that it relies on these clunky slow robotic arms for movement say you're operating on a patient's foot he starts screaming out in pain you got to get up to his face smack him around a little bit make him shut up good fuck okay so these patients in the robot are under anesthesia so they're not gonna feel anything and you don't have to smack them around. In luck with these robotic arms, they're slow as shit and they don't have any travel distance. Instead, we're gonna mount the surgical tools to a rail system that can move anywhere on the operating table. Hey, look, it's past Michael. You know it took him five whole days to 3D model and build one rail? So usually these Da Vinci systems operate on one specific part. Like um, sometimes uh, urologists use them on a kidney. So they don't have to travel all over the place. Or ob gyn obstetricians use it on the ovaries, uterus, and that area. So they don't have to travel far. So there's um, not a real point for going back and forth. Uh, so that would be more applicable for someone who operates from head to toe, maybe a trauma surgeon or something like that. But um, usually uh, you'll have a uh, whole team member there and not just one guy in a robot. Rail carriage, what a dipshit. Hey man, shut the fuck up, this shit's hard. Make me a little bitch, I'm the narrator. I'm like, quite the mouth in this kid, isn't it? Oh my god, you can't kill me. I'm Here's what the final carriage looks like. You see, it uses wheel bearings to- So I'm not sure about the whole carriage system uh, and how that would work and how it would actually be applicable, but it's kind of interesting that this guy gives this a try. Travel up and down the slots in this aluminum rod. But Michael, you're just gonna use your hand to make it move? No, you're stupid and I hate you. For power, we're using a brushless DC motor and an O-drive to turn this into kind of like a brushless servo motor. Do I know what that means? Absolutely fucking not. I've never done this before. What I do know is someone told, my voice cracked. <laughs> what I do know is someone told me this would be fast and very accurate. And all you have to do to put it in is, I forgot to record all the sound effects, okay? Give me a fucking break. Lit. I got the motor very professionally hooked up to the driver board, which is hooked up to my computer, so we can see what this thing can do. Okay, so this is the like calibration sequence. It needs to do this before it actually runs. Oh, that's so fucking sick. Uh, I think it, it should- I have to admit, he seems like he's pretty good at robotics. It should be a little faster though. Uh, oh, okay, the motor has default parameters, so you can just turn those up. Okay, let's try it out now. No, fuck. Oh, bad, bad, bad. Not sure in surgery it has to be that quick. Bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's, that's fast. Give me one second. Okay, you just stand, stand right there. Whoa, that's pretty cool. <laughs> we just gotta put a few of these together and it looks like this. I did the quirky little snap teleportation thing, right? That was three weeks ago, I'm fucking tired. But I built this test platform out of aluminum and wood that I stole from my girlfriend's bed frame. 
Working on this for three weeks, that takes dedication and effort. I'll have to give them that. It's not like I can go to Home Depot and quarantine. It's just a prototype so I can write and test the software before I build the actual thing. But even the prototype is pretty cool. It's the same idea with the motor carriage on the X-axis, but now I have two additional motors on the Y-axis. And on their own, they're just motors. They don't know how to talk to each other. They don't know how to cooperate. But if you write some software that can talk to all the motors, you can make it do pretty much anything you want. This is the homing sequence. It figure out the bounds of the machine by measuring the amperage of the, of the motor on the motors when they stop. <laughs> Yeah, you can make it. You can make it do this shit. It's maybe not as stable as you'd want. Uh, it doesn't seem too stable and doesn't seem very precise, which you need in surgery. You want it to be, but yeah, it's just a prototype. <laughs> so stupid. So I'm controlling it with my mouse right now. It looks jerky and awful, but it's actually got a really good amount of precision to it. It's kind of going in a circle from the top-down view. Like I said, this is. Uh, no surgery happens that fast, so. Um... He criticized the Vinci system for being clunky and slow, but there's a reason for that. Not the final surgery robot. It's gonna be much more refined, much more medical looking, you know, much more safe for the user. And all that move. Okay, I hope so. Controlled by the code I wrote. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show it. I know everyone thinks it's boring, so we- Psych, I don't give a shit what you think. Look at this dynamic uh, bounds detection routine that's fucking sick. Here's a limit switch. You can put it here to detect the bounds of your machine. Yeah, fuck that limit switch. It's cringe. Instead, write some code that steps the motor forward until it starts using a lot of power. Then you know you hit the edge of the rail. And then you know- You might have to throw this whole thing in the toilet. You know exactly where you are in relation to the bounds of the machine. It's fucking sick. Look how cool the code part is, guys. I'm gonna keep going. This part applies a scale factors that are calculated as a function of the input but Michael I hear you ask so you can move the carry he's obviously pretty good at math carriage over any part of the operating table you want great but how are you gonna move the medical tools up and down to engage with the patient well that's where the carriage utility mechanism comes into play that's the thing that's gonna move the scalpel or the clamp or whatever up and down which is great there's just a small problem slight problem well I built it I built it which is a good thing my original plan was you know just to have a thin piece of plastic with a motor attached to it that moves a plate easy but then I fucking I saw that thing <laughs> Okay, there's no way that's gonna survive, so I gotta make it a little strong. You know, I may as well make it go a little faster. I got a little carried away. Now Definitely got a lot of ideas, doesn't he? Now it looks like a time bomb and it weighs 10 fucking pounds. It works great. The motor precisely moves the mounting plate up and down wherever you want it to go. The thing is, I just don't know if those motors can handle 10 pounds, so we're gonna have to do a little test. Michael, why don't you just use the carriage utility mechanism to test it out? Well, it took me a long time to build and it's fucking beautiful, so cry more. It looks like it's handling small movements pretty well. Y axis action. Okay, that's not that. It doesn't look like small movements pretty well. They look like large jerky movements. If a surgeon moves his hands like that, patient's gonna be in big trouble. That bad. Okay. Oh, it's fine. It'll be fine. We can probably just go ahead and make the final version. And it looks like this. I did the stupid hand thing again. It's been three more weeks. I have severe depression. But Michael, where's the surgery robot? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, big reveal. This is the surgery robot. Massive payoff. Huge. I have brain damage. Behold the superior surgery robot, you Da Vinci shitter tins. It's got the cum. It's got the cable management. It's got the super fucking hard to reach driver boards. I don't know why I put them under here. I thought it would look cool. But Michael, does it even work? Does it work? <laughs> Good question. Does it even work? <laughs> Does it work? I don't know if it works. I haven't turned it on yet. I've been too afraid since it took me so long to build, so I turned the camera on so you can at least see my tears when it tears itself apart. I'm worried about this shit because when I built it, I went ooga booga caveman brain, metal strong. Metal not strong. Metal more like McDonald's play place trampoline. But you gotta take chances when you're innovating on the next great thing, so I'm gonna turn it on. Oh god, oh please. Yeah, okay. Please don't break it. Yeah! All right, the machine's working. Now we can start to control it. But Michael, where's the controller? Fuck you, you are the controller. I got this VR hand tracking camera off of Amazon that works super goddamn well. So you just take the hand coordinates from this, pipe them in the surgery robot, and bing, bang, boom. Uh, that's really interesting, but it's not very precise. Still don't see how it's gonna work in surgery. You to mention robotics, you can move my thing with just floating your hand around. Robot, go here. Ooh, robot, do surgery here. Oh no, patient bleeding. This might could be like some type of manufacturing robot, but not in surgery. There, oh, do surgery there on that part. How about you do surgery over here? Now do surgery over there, and now do surgery. Fuck you, Da Vinci. You shitty robot can't do that. You need to squeeze those little metal robot teeth to do yours. 
Oh shit, before I sell my design to surgeons across the nation, we have to attach some surgical tools to the cum, because otherwise it's just a big ass robot. So let's buy a scalpel on Amazon. Wow, that is just unacceptable. Scalpels are gonna take a whole three days. Wow, that's pretty reasonable. Fuck no, that's messed up. Dang global health crisis. That's far too long. If only I had an alternative. When you really think about it, scalpels are just shitty, smaller knives. So why don't we just use bigger, better knives? Like, uh, hello, we already have those. Wake up, sheeple! Are you tired of outdated surgical technology? Are you looking for the cutting edge and power, precision? I guess this is a selling point here. And usability? Look no further. The future of surgical robotics is here. <laughs> Look at the fucking knife! <laughs> Unlike some other surgical systems... That doesn't look like too much precision there. <laughs> Looks more like a, an autopsy. You could use that maybe uh, uh, to... Uh, that a pathologist could do when he's doing autopsies, perhaps. Systems, we've run a gamut of tests to ensure our machine has power. I'm gonna stab a pineapple with oh, fuck. Commencing the operation. <laughs> Operate on it. Surgery <laughs> over here now. Um, patient, small incision. Uh, small incision, we'll move the patient. Yeah, that's not a slow incision. This looks more like a massacre. Patient. Commence surgery on the patient. But power isn't the only thing we strive for. Precision is an essential tenet of surgery, and we make no exceptions when testing for accuracy. What the fuck is that? Hey, ready to do some painting? No, Lily, come on, please. Ah! Oh shit! Ah! Oh, fuck. Draw the Mona Lisa. Draw the <laughs> Mona Lisa. Ah! Okay. Oh, I got the paint. I got the paint. Eyes. Oh, you, you. That's a little race. Have to give them A for effort, but for reality and precision, so far this is a Failure. Racist looking Lily, I'm not gonna oh, shit. Yeah, you Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna pressure you, but this is supposed to show how accurate my machine is. <laughs> It'll reach the water. <laughs> Let's see a Da Vinci try to This obviously needs a lot more work. Try to do that. You might be wondering, is the system FDA approved? But don't just take our word for it. Here's what a real medical professional has to say about this innovative new technology. We're gonna go for like So they ask a, a former EMT who's never been in an operating room before to check out a surgery robot. Really? Like a laparoscopic appendectomy. So if we just make a small incision above the chest here, uh, we can, okay. Uh, a little bit more difficult for some procedures, but not, you can see you still have a lot more action control than a lot of this looks like a good Jason Halloween movie so if they want to make a robot for Jason for Halloween this could be it but not in surgery in surgical systems <laughs> like I was saying moving the patient is he looks a little bewildered there the former EMT if that could work in surgery not. he's actually giving it some thought this is crazy a lot easier with the system like normally you'd have to manually move them to be uh with Oh, there goes the head falling off. Would you add this to your hospital? Do you think hospitals could adopt? Uh, seems a little dangerous. Okay, I- Seems just a little dangerous, I'd agree. I appreciate the feedback. You're wrong. Last but not least, we've made our machines so intuitive that anyone can do surgery with no prior training. So you've never seen this- Anyone can do surgery with no prior training. Sure machine before in your life. Yeah. This is perfect because this study is to see if we can bring someone from zero skill level all the way up to the ability of a surgeon. Boot up right in front of, not too close because it's kind of dangerous. So just put your hand out. <laughs> Could you just put your hand? That looks really precise if you're a mass murderer. Hand out above the thing. <laughs> so higher up controls the knife position. You can move it further. It might be good for like butchering animals to some extent, you know? further closer and it'll get further away from you. We're gonna make a small incision right up. It's probably not even precise enough for that. Above the ear. <laughs> so there's some six, there's some six, okay. Yeah, I agree. We wouldn't want to do this even to animals. This would be totally inhumane. So you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Shit. Okay, so clearly, well fuck. Oh, cut. you're clearly doing another incision to stop, plug the hole with the knife. Yeah, yeah, perfect, nice. Yeah, you I love the bloodbath effects here. Oh, this, what's, it's okay. This is like Hollywood movie stuff, you know. He should sell this to Hollywood as a 
mass murderers uh, device. It's okay, no, it's fine. It's, it's learning, it's a learning experience. Try and retract the knife from the head. Just, let's just try and get it out of the... Oh, I Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. That's how anybody could be a surgeon. Sure. Okay, good incision. If your patient's over I think he almost cut his fingers off right there. Here, and you don't want him to be over there. Move him over here. Do some surgery over here. Move him back. I don't even know what surgery this was supposed to be. Thank you for watching. That concludes research and development for my surgical system. If you're a hospital looking to try it out, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to me on YouTube, and maybe, just maybe, I'll let you borrow it for a bit. Remember, stay in school, smoke crack, fuck you Da Vinci robots, bye. I don't think he's gonna get a lot of phone calls for hospitals for that. But like I said, maybe uh, on movie sets uh, to replace Jason and Hollywood for mass murders, that might be the ticket. He should find something alternative to surgery because it's not gonna work. So that was kind of entertaining and funny. If you like these type of videos, hit the subscribe and like button and there'll be more on the way.